Hey y'all, Rob here with ATX Legal. Today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about what to do if you're being investigated for sexual assault. Tough topic. Um, before I go into the topic, I wanna to talk a little bit about why I do what I do, uh, why it's important, and um, you know how I can basically how I can defend people who are charged with such uh, terrible crimes. So, you know, in my opinion, the more terrible the crime is, the more important it is that you have a good attorney. Um, people are falsely accused every single day. Uh, you hear sometimes people say, oh, everybody in the system is guilty. And, you know, that might be true for 90% of people, but for 10%, it's not true. And that's actually a very large number of people when you multiply that over the whole population. So, you know, that's the first reason is, you know, people do get falsely accused and those people need um, good defense the most. But even for people who have committed crimes, you know, um, being able to put forward a defense, a lot of times these people are overcharged. Um, and so, you know, for them to have an attorney on their side to make sure that the state is proving every element of their charge, that they're not overcharging, and that they don't just, just get railroaded over by the prosecutor, it's extremely important. Um, you know, I, I don't have any compunctions about what I do. I, I feel like I'm on the right side um, when, I'm, when I'm defending my clients. So um, just to get that out of the way, um, let's get into the video. And just first off, it's not legal advice. If you do want legal advice on your particular case, um, give us a call uh, or visit us at atx.legal. Um, and especially with um, sex assault, um, you're gonna want to get representation very early on in the process. So if you've been contacted or if a loved one has been contacted by an investigator, Give us a call immediately. Don't wait till tomorrow. It's something that um, it, it's really important to get started right away. If I get that call on the weekend, I'll give you a call back on the same day because it is important to get started on the process specifically in these cases. All right, so with this video, I'm going to be focusing on what to do when a sexual assault investigation is first starting. And why is that? as opposed to different types of charges where you get arrested right away. Like with the DWI, you usually get arrested right when you get pulled over. With a sexual assault, oftentimes there's gonna be an investigation. Um, and during that investigation, you might be scared, you might not know what's going on. And that's really the time to go and hire an attorney. So I'm gonna be talking about sort of that time period where you've gotten a call. Usually that's how these happen is you'll get a call from an investigator or they'll knock on your door and they'll say, hey, we just want to talk about something that happened. So what do you do when that happens? Immediately be polite. Um, don't be confrontational with law enforcement. That will get you nowhere. Um, but don't say anything. Just say, um, let's reschedule something. Or you can say, I need to talk to, your, to a lawyer, but you don't have to. You can just say, um, I can't talk right now. But immediately when you hang up with them, go find a lawyer to talk to, find someone who will give you a free consultation or go look for someone to hire because you're in a serious situation. So when you call an attorney, um, the very first thing that I have to say is be truthful with this attorney. There's a confidentiality there. They cannot go tell anyone. They can't tell police. They can't tell your wife. They can't tell anybody anything that you're telling them unless you're a danger to yourself or others going forward. But other than that, there's complete confidentiality with the attorney. And if you're not straightforward with them, it's going to really hamstring them and make it difficult for them to do their job. I've had clients who were not truthful with me. I Believe me, it makes it much harder and the outcomes tend to be much worse because there's confusion over how to um, go forward. If you are straightforward with your attorney and not just open as far as not lying, but also if you volunteer information that you think he needs to know, um, that's gonna be helpful as well. So just because your attorney doesn't ask that magic question that would get the information that he needs, you should be volunteering that information to your attorney as well. So the first thing that your attorney is gonna probably be deciding with you and working on is whether to talk to the police. So you've heard to never talk to the police, I'm sure, and for the vast majority of cases, that is the case. But there are times that you want to schedule a time to go um, speak with the police officer, always with an attorney. Um, but I want to kind of go over the factors that I would be going over before deciding whether to go to the police. So 
the, the first thing you want to find out, and, and you can find this out in different ways. Usually, um, as the attorney, I would call the investigating officer and just get a feel for where they were in their investigation. But you want to find out if they're either definitely going to bring charges, um, don't have enough information to bring charges, or if it's kind of in that gray area where they might bring charges and might not. If they're definitely going to bring charges, that's the end of the discussion. There's really no need for you to go talk to the police. Um, same is the case if they don't have enough information for probable cause for an arrest warrant. You're not going to want to go talk to them and give them probable cause if they don't have it. Um, but there's a third situation where it's kind of a gray area. It could go either way. And in those situations, sometimes um, it becomes a good idea to go talk to the police. Why? Because you can convince them to not bring charges at all. Um, if charges aren't brought at all, you don't have to go through the process of an expunction. You don't have to go through the process of clearing your name in court. The case really just goes away right then and there. So in that situation, there can be times that you want to go talk to the police. There are still other factors to consider. Um, one is how clear your story is. Is it something that is going to stand up to pressure and is it something that you're going to be able to repeat over and over and over again going forward throughout the case because once you make a statement and it is on the record these are the facts that you're stuck with so if you're confused about what happened if you were drunk and you're not sure about details um, there are definitely times when you do not want to go talk to the police even when you're in that they're in that gray area where they may or may not bring charges Okay, so we talked about some of the limited advantages to talking to the police. Let's talk about the disadvantages. So you can definitely talk yourself into charges. The police might not have enough information to bring charges, and then if you give them a statement, all of a sudden they could bring charges based on what you told them. Um, they might, you might actually give them info on crimes that they aren't even investigating. So. You might say, oh yeah, there was a bag of weed, and now in Austin they don't really talk, uh, charge for weed anymore, but you, you, know, you could give up information on other crimes that they weren't even investigating, that you're not even thinking about. So that's a second reason not to talk to the police. Um, third, even minor inconsistencies in your testimony are gonna be construed as lies. Now, they can use those inconsistencies actually to bring, to get probable cause if there's a minor, difference in your story based on the evidence that they have or based on something that you say at a later date, um, those inconsistencies, even if they're not really related to the crime being alleged, those inconsistencies are going to be seen by the police as lies and they're going to hold it against you. Another issue is uh, you could be arrested right then and there at the interview. So, you know, often one of the big considerations that my clients have is they want to be able to turn themselves in on their own terms. Um, when they don't have work and can deal with a walkthrough or get a bond posted. Uh, if you go into an interview and they decide they want to arrest you right then, even if they've made promises that they're not going to do that, they absolutely could arrest you. So um, that's always a risk when you go speak with the police um, and it's always something to be considered. It's another disadvantage uh, to going and talking to the police. So. Um, in my experience, I can actually count on one hand the amount of times that I have gone and spoken with the police. It's always after very careful consideration, and it's always we want to get information from the police. When we go in and, and talk to them, it has to be a two-way street. We want to find out where they are in their investigation, um, what are the problems with their investigation, and we also want to provide information for them that helps our cause. Maybe if there's um, social media evidence that you have from the complaining witness, or if there's other proof that we want to bring to them, we would want to bring that to them. So there are narrow situations that you do want to speak to the police, but they are very limited. Now, of course, always defer to your attorney. What they are telling you after they've reviewed the case, um, you know, I would always acknowledge, with, even if you want to say, you say, oh, I want to go clear my name, I just want to go if your attorney's telling you don't do it, it's a very good idea to not do it. And of course, never go without an attorney. You're always gonna wanna have an attorney present. So there are other considerations, um, not just speaking to the police um, when this investigation is going on. So we want to gather all the evidence that can help us or hurt us. We wanna get everything together. 
Um, witness statements. So anybody that was there around the time that the alleged sexual assault happened, even if it was an hour before, an hour later, anybody who can kind of get the give the feel for what was happening in the situation. Uh, we also want to gather together the complaining witnesses' history. So a lot of times when these are false accusations, unfortunately, um, it's happened before. So if the complaining witness has accused someone else in the past, we definitely want to know that. Um, and we just want to gather all the evidence um, together as the police are investigating. And again, we want to do it as soon as possible because if we can gather this evidence and present it to the police, it can increase the chances that charges won't be filed. And again, we're only dealing in that kind of narrow situation where charges may or may not be filed. If the police have already made up their mind and they're going to file charges, then we're just gathering this information for ourselves and we'll have it ready uh, when we go to trial or if we go to, to court and negotiate with the prosecutors. Another factor, uh, we always wanna ask the police to notify us if a warrant is issued. That gives us the chance to go turn ourselves in on our own time, get a bond signed by the judge before you go in if that's possible, or talk to bondsmen and get money together to post a bond if that's gonna be necessary. So the police do not have to notify us, but oftentimes if you are polite with the officers and you give them assurances that you're not gonna be running and they believe you, they're going to notify your attorney who can then set up a walkthrough or post a bond or however we handle the bond. Now, I'm not gonna go too much into the elements of sexual assault. There's a lot of different types of charges here. Obviously, if minors are involved, it's a whole different thing. Um, but usually with a sexual assault, there's two major issues. It's did the sex actually occur and was there any kind of consent? So the, it, it becomes very important if, you're, if your story is the sex never occurred, but then there's DNA evidence that something happened, that's gonna be huge. So that's why it's important to be honest with your attorney. If nothing happened, you need to tell your attorney that. If something happened, whether it's gray area, like, oh, we did a little bit, but then she said no and I stopped, you need to be honest about everything with your attorney. So if you're not doing that, if you're not open and you're not you know, forthright in giving this information, even when your attorney is not maybe asking that specific question, it's gonna make it more difficult and it's gonna make it harder for your attorney to make the strategic decisions when it comes to what information are we gonna divulge to the police officer and to the uh, prosecutors um, in order to further your case. Because if I find out later, if you say, oh, nothing happened, and then I find out later there's DNA evidence, um, all of a sudden, you know, ev all of our strategy that we had to that point is, is actually now working against us. So I just can't stress enough, be honest um, and, and open with your attorney. He can't divulge that information to anybody and it's only gonna help your case if you're, gonna be if you're being honest. Now obviously sexual assault is a very, very serious crime. There's definitely jail time on the line um, in, in the case that you get convicted. So that's why it's very important to take these extremely seriously, even if you've been falsely accused. Um, don't you know, sit on that and think, oh, the justice system will work itself out, no. People are falsely accused and go to jail every single day. Um, you need to really be on top of the uh, accusations. You need to um, have an attorney who's gonna be active very early in the process, um, even before charges are filed. So um, if you do um, have any questions, if you or your, a loved one has been accused and maybe you've gotten a call from a police officer, uh, a detective who's looking into the case, visit us at atx.legal, set up a completely free case evaluation. We'll talk about what you can do to protect yourself and whether you need to hire an attorney at this point. I look forward to hearing from you. If you do have any questions or concerns and good luck going forward.